I am migrating away from Convex. If you need to select a count or select all IDs, then you will literally select star and make your count. This was a comment from Theo's latest epic video on databases and Convex. The video was great by the way, so you should totally check that out. But while I was perusing through the comments, this one really caught my eye as it has a kind of a good point. Why doesn't Convex support select or count? To show you what I mean, let's take a look at this really simple schema. So here we have a Convex schema with two tables. Small table just has a single value, small value, and it's only gonna have a small string in it. And then we have big table that also has a small value and a big value, which is gonna contain a really large string like 100 kilobytes or so. Now I've gone ahead and populated both tables with a bit of data. So now we can see that both tables have got a thousand rows in them. And the small value is just a small string with some random number in it. And then big value is this big long random string here. Right, now let's say we want to do a query that is like the SQL equivalent of select star from small table. Um, this is how you would go about it in Convex. And then kind of this is the same thing for the big table. So let's take these functions for a spin in the dashboard. So if we go to the functions tab, we can then select our select star from small table function uh, and run it. And it takes roughly 900 milliseconds or so. Then if I run the select star from big table function, I can run it a couple of times. It takes roughly two to three seconds ish. This makes sense, right? Cause well, the big table is bigger. So it's gonna take longer to fetch that data. Oh, and just quickly, if we just hop back to the, the code a sec, the uh, keen eyed amongst you might be wondering why I'm doing these queries inside of a mutation rather than a convex query where they probably should be. Well, it's because of two reasons really. So the first one is caching and a uh, spoiler alert, this is gonna come up in a bit in this video, but you see convex's um, queries are automatically cached. So as long as none of the inputs change to a query, then it doesn't need to rerun it. I can show you what I mean here by if I just create a query and then I hop over to the dashboard and then I go to the logs tab and now I select my query, then it's gonna run it. But then I have no way to run it again. So this is the second reason why I'm using mutation because when I do mutation, I actually get a button here that can run with a time output. Um, so when I'm doing a query though, for a quick way to test it is I can just change the function in the drop down here and then go back to it and select it again and rerun it again but we'll see in the logs that it's gonna say the word cached in there. That's because it didn't need to rerun the body of this query because nothing changed about the inputs. So that means this time round, the second time round, we're gonna get an almost instantaneous response rather than having to wait for Convex to do its query. Right, so I guess now the question is, how do we go about doing a select then? Um, if I'm looking at the big table, for example, how can I make it so I'm just want to pull out the small value from the big table and just ignore this big value. Well, if I just press dot here on the query, um, you can see that there's no select or project or anything like that. But what we can do is because convex queries and mutations are effectively like stored procedures, we can actually just do a map over the value inside of the mutation itself. All right, so let's try this one out now. All right, well that certainly seems faster, like about 600 milliseconds-ish compared to the two to three seconds from before. But looks can be deceiving. There's a lot going on when we press the button here. So let's have a quick look at a diagram. So I have my browser down here in Australia. Actually, I should just turn this upside down because, you know, Australians live in upside down land. Anyway, when I press the button, my browser that is running the Convex dashboard is going to make a request to the Convex backend. The Convex is then going to spin up a small little VM to run our function. It's called a VA isolate. You don't need to worry about that really. But um, what it's actually then going to do is it's going to make a request to the underlying storage or the database um, and return the data back to the query, which then is eventually going to return it back to us in, down here in the dashboard. So now the Convex dashboard is going to record how long that whole round trick time, which is like, you know, 600 milliseconds in this case which makes sense is that's kind of what you usually want. Um, you want to time how long the user is going to experience the round trip time. But for us testing purposes here, this is not actually what we want. What we're interested in really is how long it takes for this function to go to the underlying storage and back again. So what we're interested in is, is this going to be faster 
than doing our normal select all um, version of the query. Is Convex doing something funky under the cover that optimizes the query because it knows we won't need the big value? Uh, unfortunately, Convex's dashboard doesn't actually expose this information to us, but all is not lost because we can go into the integrations tab in the Convex dashboard and enable one of these log stream providers to get more detailed information about each call. So I'm going to hook up Axiom. Um, if you're not familiar with Axiom, it's an incredible log streaming service that I adore and I've used extensively in the past for my game battle tabs. I mean, just check out this pricing. <laughs> 25 gig per month of free storage and 500 gigabytes of bandwidth is just insane. To put that in perspective, on battle tabs, we're sending millions upon millions of log rows uh, every month and we're just barely, barely scratching our usage. It's unbelievable. Anyways, so once I've hooked up Axiom to our Convex backend, um, we can try our select star from small table function again and hop back into Axiom and check out our log line in our stream here. Right, so we've got a lot more information here now. So we can see that our deployment name is here. Um, it's got our function and a bunch of other stuff. But what we're interested in for right now is this data.execution time MS and data.usage.database read bytes. So I'm just going to grab both of those and pop them into this table. Right, now let's do the same for the other functions. All right, interesting. So we can see that when we select just the small value from the big table and return it, that it is indeed faster. But the question is, how much of that time is spent serializing the data when we return back from that function versus what we're actually saving on the query? Hmm. Unfortunately, it's kind of impossible to tell that from this data. But what we can say, though, is that the number of bytes that is read from the underlying database is the same in both scenarios. So if the data that is read is the same in both scenarios, then we know that Convex must not be doing some clever selecting of only the data that's required from the underlying database. So I think in the end, that kind of validates what source code deleted was saying. You must select that entire row each time and you are charged for the bandwidth usage. And Convex does indeed price its database bandwidth usage based upon this. Don't forget though, in a real life scenario, most of the time we're going to be doing these queries inside of a Convex query function. And therefore, as long as the inputs don't change, we're, our value is going to get cached. And Convex doesn't charge for cached query database reads because there was no database that was read. So in real life, probably the pricing is actually going to be a lot cheaper than you think because most of the time it won't actually be hitting the database, the underlying database. But back to the original question then, why doesn't Convex provide a select? I don't think it's actually an issue of Convex not wanting to do something like this. It's more of a limitation around Convex being both a relational and document database. You see, other row-based databases like Postgres benefit from some very specific optimizations because they have fixed columns. So for example, in Postgres, if a field gets too large, um, I think it's about two kilobytes, then what it actually does is it replaces that value in the row with a special pointer to a place called the oversized attribute storage technique or toast area. So that means when you want to read uh, a number of rows that might include our big value, it first has to do a lookup into this area to grab the entire row, which is quite a, an expensive operation to do. So the optimization that select does in Postgres is if you only select the small value, then it's going to allow us to skip that expensive lookup into the toast area. And this is something that Convex doesn't do because it's actually storing the entire document to its underlying storage, not columns. Oh, and things start to get super messy when we start talking about indices on both databases. So let's not go there right now. The key thing to know here though, is that while it might be possible for Convex to do some sort of toast-like process internally, it doesn't actually want to for a more philosophical reason that brings us to our second question. Why doesn't Convex support count? If we return to source code deleters comment and take a look at the next thing they said, if you need to select a count or select all IDs, you will literally select star, then make your count. And they are quite right. If we 
hop back into the code for a sec and try putting a dot again here, we'll see that there's no count function. So the only way to count our rows um, from a query is as the author suggested to return back all our rows and then count them, which means reading a lot of extra data unnecessarily. So again, why doesn't Convex support count? Postgres, MongoDB, Firebase, all have these count primitives. So why not Convex? So here we get down to it. What does the lack of select and the lack of count have in common? You see, both operations sound cheap, but actually usually require reading a lot of data. So count has to touch or at least index scan every single matching row. And it has to do this on both relational databases and on convex. So in convex as well, this means a lot of extra de documents read, which is gonna blow out the cache and every single write and also cost you a whole heap of extra bandwidth. And select would only be cheap if convex could skip reading those big fields from its internal storage layer. But Convex stores the entire JSON document, not just column chunks like in Postgres or other relational databases. So it has to read the full blob back, then throw away what you don't need. But the issue is, is like that select statement can have unexpected performance changes as you scale up. If you were to put a value inside of that big value that is less than two kilobytes, then you will get a very fast read. But if you put a big value in there, then it could be a slow read. So sometimes it, it could be fast, sometimes it can be slow. It's kind of inconsistent. So convex philosophy is no pretend cheap primitives. Instead, you model what you really need and thus you get consistent performance and pricing as you would expect. So could convex theoretically add these? Sure, probably but the easy API would mask the real costs and thrash the cache and create unpredictable performance. Convex prefers explicit modeling over magic that SQL and its underlying query planner present. Okay, so finally then, what are the solutions in Convex land to these two issues? So firstly, for the select issue, what I personally would probably do is split up my data so that I have my big values stored in another table, and then I would only pull in that data when I need to. And then I might write a query that would look something a bit like this. So if you really think about it, what we're doing here is kind of what to Postgres does for you under the covers, which with its toast, we're just pulling it in manually when we want to and we get our explicit understanding of how the, the performance implications are doing this. As for count, what I would probably do is I would keep a count somewhere in my database. So when I change something in a mutation, I increment or decrement that count at the same time as changing the, th the data. So like here, for example, we have a mutation liking a post. We record the like as a row in the database, but at the same time, we also record the number of likes as a count on the post object. That way, when we read posts, we don't have to query the likes table at the same time to find out how many likes a given post has. It's just right there on the post. But for more complex scenarios, um, you could check out the convex aggregate component that's designed for this exact purpose, really. It not only counts, sums, does maxes, bounds based ranking, things like that. It's kind of perfect for like leaderboards or other things like that. And by the way, make sure you are subscribed because I'm probably going to be doing a video on this component very soon as it's really powerful. Oh, and one last little thing I learned from a colleague, but um, don't tell anybody is there is actually a cheeky little uh, count for tables in Convex. And that's how the Convex dashboard is able to show this number. It's not documented and not officially visible through the types and TypeScript, but it's there. Um, I just wouldn't use it in production if I was you, unless you wanted your app to break at some point without warning. Alrighty ho, well, that's about it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to drop me a like. And if you have any questions or comments, then please do leave them down below. I read every single one. And if you enjoyed this video, then you might want to check out this one. It's another Convex internals video that I did where I dove deep down into how the Convex cogen process works. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching. Cheerio.